to another episode of From the Shadows. And as always, guys, if you are enjoying the series so far, please do drop a like on the video. Now, I actually want to start with basically just by saying thank you, because I've had a couple of days now to sort of see the sort of reception that the new series has got. And I'm really, really thankful for all the support. And it's been fantastic. Um, so without further ado, let's get into what's happened over the last few matches. Now, of course, in the last episode, we had an absolute thriller of a game against Lons, who I actually went and checked. And they're a top half club um, in League 1. So for us to actually take them to penalties and very nearly win that game was huge and that for me shows a lot of potential in us to have a good run at the cup pretty much every time we get a chance basically the great thing about the cup as well is because you get some really lower league teams in it at times it's basically like getting five or three or four at least glorified friendlies during the season um which you can test stuff out and so that's quite useful if anything although i think we may have got a little bit lucky with some of the draws we've had in the cup this year to be fair um so there is also that now someone said that i should have arranged loads of friendlies against big clubs in the summer that is something I usually do do, but the problem is there's no point in me doing that in the first summer because I need those friendlies to actually build the tactic. If we're playing Bayern Munich every week, I'm never going to be able to build a tactic because we won't know what's actually going to work or not. That's why I didn't do it. Um, but as you can see, obviously, we tried to arrange some friendlies like that over the uh, Christmas period, and I will try and do some of that in the summer again, And but I still need to sort of intersperse it with games against winnable teams so we can actually get our confidence and match fitness up, uh, basically. So that's what's going on with that. Um, another thing is, with regard to the player interactions, I've heard some stuff about how it's to do with the squad status of the players. It, it ri literally isn't. Uh, like, I've had, over, since the last episode, I've had probably about, I don't know, 10 players come to me and say that they were complaining about how much football they're getting, basically. Not a single one of those players had a squad status lower, uh, sorry, higher than backup. They were either backup or lower. So the point is, it doesn't matter what squad status you set, they're going to complain regardless, because that's just what they do. In fact, I get more players that have got lower squad statuses complaining about not getting first-team football than I do that the ones that are, actually. Um, but obviously, that's probably because the ones that have got higher squad statuses are going to be getting more football. But you see what I mean? So it doesn't matter what squad status you set, they just seem to complain uh, pretty much... Yeah, <laughs> as and when they feel like it. So that's kind of annoying. But hey, you've got to move on, and I feel we're doing okay in the meantime. Now... Away from home, we've still had a few issues uh, this season. We've had a, a, a slightly better time of it, but it is away from home where I feel that our sort of form is a little bit less. I don't know what the away form chart's like. We'll have a look in a minute. But we started off the month away at Vendée Luchon, and it was not a particularly special performance from us. I feel like we were maybe a little bit unlucky, but still, they scored their only shot of the game. Cedric Ruel put them in front on 13 minutes. And I was a little bit worried because these guys are was second or third from bottom of the league and obviously as you can see we also lost Jason Boileon uh, for three weeks with a twisted knee I think or it might have been injured later in the month I can't really actually remember the point is it was not good it took a penalty from Luther on the stroke of half time we love goals either in the 90th minute or in the 45th minute I've noticed a lot of goals are being scored in those time periods we never give up and that's fantastic for us I think we've scored two more late ones this year um, uh, in this episode um, so an equaliser for Luther but we just couldn't kick on and we just weren't able to find the target very much in the second half and that was kind of the main downfall for us there so we took a point there but I'm pretty certain that was the day that Amiens lost at home against uh, UBSCO so it's definitely done us some favours um, I was you know because our form at that point wasn't too bad but we had a few defeats in there you know we had the defeat at Amiens we had the defeat against Strasbourg then we had a win uh, but then we had a win, but then we had another draw. So it wasn't superb, you know. Um, seven points from our last five games is not really championship winning form. Um, so we did need to get back on the horse. And we came up against Bastia next. And, you know, away at Bastia, we did well to come back from 2-0 down. But it was this home game that we really did start to stamp our authority. And I think that we were a bit lucky to win this by the scoreline that we did, I have to say. Sokhoye put us in front after seven minutes, and that was fantastic. And then, obviously, Gamiet, um doubled that advantage not long after. But then, as you can see, uh, jean Brian yeah, jean Brian Bukaka got on back for Bastia, and I did worry that they were going to come back in because the game was not particularly in our favour. As you can see, we had more possession, but not by much. And... We actually had relatively simple, uh, rather relatively comparable pass completion rates, so it wasn't like we were dominating them really, and uh, maybe a little bit, but uh, we were still committing less fouls, so it was useful in that sense. But then, yet again, Idris Ekshergui on the stroke of half time made it three one. I don't know what, how he keeps managing to score goals in like first half stoppage time. It's fantastic. Often they're penalties, but this one wasn't. It was from open play, bursting forward and bang three one. Lovely stuff. Then we managed to get ourselves a nice, lovely set piece goal from Irv Lebohi. And by the way, guys, um. Those of you who are new to my channel don't know this. These set piece instructions that I use are in a link in the description along with everything else, basically. Um, they're not my instructions. They've got them from strikerless.com, which is a fantastic website. And I strongly urge you to check it out for things like throw ins and corner tactics because that's where I get these from. And they've worked, they've served me well over the past four or five months, basically, since I found them. Um, so there you go. 
A 4-1 win over Bastia, probably one of our better wins. I mean, admittedly, uh, we had that 5-0, of course, in the live comp, but that was still a fantastic win for me because it showed our class against a really decent team. I can't remember where they were in the league. I think they slipped off a little bit, but still on the rebound. Now, next up, we went away to Dunkirk. And Dunkirk, of course, if you remember back in the early part of this season, I can't remember how much we beat them by. 2-0, we beat them at home. And they were doing okay at the time. But, yeah, um, basically... Coming into this match, and I had to make a note of this because I couldn't believe it. Coming into this match against us, Dunkirk had not won in 16 matches. Um, and they'd only got two wins on the board all season. And I was worried that we were actually going to end up giving them a point, to be honest. As you can see, we were fantastic in terms of the number of shots, number of chances, possession, everything perfect. But it took until the 91st minute when Loic Puyo, up from a corner... Oh, well, actually, I say the ball swing, swung out to the edge of the area. It was played into the box with a long shot and it deflected around and Loic Puyo was able to stab it over the line and give us an absolutely vital away point uh, not away point away win and another late goal rescues the day for us really and I was I've celebrated this one like we'd won the title it was important for me because I'm pretty certain that was the day that Amiens were dropping more points next up we had Red Star at home and oh man our home form has really picked up lately that's something that has pleased me a lot um, took a little while for us to get going but we were definitely the better team Thomas Gamiet now that he's back and firing is doing a lovely job then just after half time Johan and Vier and by the way if you guys wanted me to check to see if he is related to uh, um Oh, I can't remember the other guy's name. Um, Favour personnel, Yanamvir. Uh, it doesn't actually say brother, but it does say favoured personnel. So it would link me to lead me to believe that he probably is uh, his brother. But I, I honestly couldn't tell you guys. I know it's called uh, Claude Loire as well. Um, but there you go. So <laughs> I apologise. I've been meaning to do that for a few episodes, so I hope you're not too pissed. Um, yeah, then... We kind of just kicked on from there, really. Richard Sokria grabbing himself another goal. He's not been quite as prolific, but that's just because he's not been able to stay fit, um, which has been an issue for us. Uh, the other issue is Oljan Bailly has come back and gone out about three or four times since his injury. Like, he got injured in the first game I brought him back into. He also then came back again and then got injured in the immediate training session afterwards. He just cannot stay fit, and it's a shame. Um... Like, even when you don't play him because you want to try and ease him back in, he just gets injured in training instead. Um, and Idris X. Shergui, who has been our man of this season, just he will surely win the fans' player of the season this year if we go up, or even if we don't. Although, when you look at the league in a minute, you're going to see that it's actually looking very likely um, that that will be the case. But we just can't afford to, you know, touch wood. It still could be a little bit iffy if we screw up a few things. But the fact, fact is, some of the games this month, particularly, you know, the home games were against good sides, but not the top top sides so i felt we were able to do well in those games and the away t the away games were against poor sides so you know all three teams that we played away from home this month were in the relegation zone so you know the draw at Vendée uh, luchon was a little bit disappointing great win at dunkirk and then we followed that up with the, a win against the bottom club away from home again not particularly emphatic this one um obviously controlled the game as you can see but we just didn't seem to be able to break them down very much and it was a bit of a shame thankfully Sokria got us that goal in the 28th minute because after that we just didn't really find the cutting edge there wasn't a lot of highlights is what I would say basically it was a shame but we weren't too bothered I was just happy to get away with a 1-0 win basically it was another point on the board and as you can see now the league has sort of changed a little bit now we're three points off the top because if you look at Amiens form as of late they've not been all that convincing they lost to SAS Epinal who are right down there in the league and that is a surprising result they also had another poor result I believe uh no they beat Strasbourg and then yeah they lost at home to SR Colmar who we're playing today and they also had a draw in there too I'm fairly certain uh yeah oh no 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 they didn't uh point is all of this has allowed us to sneak into top spot again on 53 points now. And that's a great turnaround, basically. Um, I was a little bit surprised. It isn't done on goal difference, though, this league. It does appear to be done on head-to-head. -head. Uh, so there's that. We need to be careful, though. And that means our game against Amiens could be crucial um, since we... Well, then again, we did only lose 2-1 away from home. So a 2-0 win against them at home would be perfect for us. Um, so there you go, basically. We're playing against Colmar. They're the sort of nearest rivals to that sort of promotion spot. But US... Uh, BCO are right in there too. But as you can see, we are 10 points above Colmar now. And a win today could... Well, a win today could put us 13 points clear of the promotion into the promotion spots with just... Uh, well, with nine games to go. And I feel, for me, that would be pretty damn good for us. And as you can see for the top goal scorers as well, Luther's right in there with 13. He's also got the most assists, the best average rating. We've got 14 clean sheets as well in 24 matches. I'm very, very happy with the way this tactic is going. Just the three defeats all season. Um in the league and that's pretty impressive let's just take a look where those defeats were so i had that annoying one earlier in the year away from home then we had that weird one 
uh, against Strasbourg, which was just very strange. And of course, there was the one against Amiens. We've been pretty good, you know. I think it really should only be two defeats. That Strasbourg one was very, very strange. Anyway, let's take a look again at the squad. Right, so top goal scorer, of course, is Luther. Oh, he's in. Oh, that's great. I forgot he picked up a slight knock. Um... 15 goals though and soccer with 13 isn't doing too bad either and he's played a few less games than often, often off the bench but then it's a kind of case of everybody else bundled in behind 11 assists for actually as well which is also good player of the match right up there too as for average rating well of course he's going to be in there but right quite close is Moriel Jambayi who if only we could get him fit again is all I can say and Cantini's also out for a little while too um key area of challenges obviously is going to be uh Libohi, but Puyol's getting in there too because he's playing center back a few times now because of the return of um Oh, God, who is it? Uh, the return of Traore. Key passes. Actually, I'll be right up there now. I'd like to think he's probably up the top of the league. Um, key tackles. Still only 13 key tackles, mate. That's incredible. Something else I wanted to quickly show you is some of the player stats and see if we have got them. Yeah, key passes there. Actually, I'll with the most with 74, which is great. Um, team conceded. Koulibaly's only been in, in the team for 10 goals, which is pretty impressive. Um trying to see oh that's what i wanted to show you i want to show you the team stats for our away form um like okay oh wait not away form um <laughs> apologies for that is there a way of showing you this i'm sorry i'm blabbering a little overall here we go so uh, at home this season we've won 11 out of 12 and lost one 33 points on the board superb is the away record i feel that we've slipped a little bit like still not too bad but as you can see just the five wins on the road five draws and two defeats you know it's nowhere near as good as UBSCO and it's still not bad record really but just the five wins on the road it does mm, I mean then again Dunkirk have yet to win an away game so it could be a lot worse for us let's put it that way anyway let's jump into the match now um Amiens are playing Colomales today so you feel that they're probably going to win and it is all down to really what we do although USBCO have got a pretty winnable game as well so you feel that those two are both going to win we're in a position where we can kind of afford a little bit of leeway but I would like to win this league Amiens have kind of dropped off the pace a little bit lately and I want to try and see what we can do from that now I'm very unsure about the system they're playing it is a little bit Christmas tree of doomy and I, I've, mm, I don't know we've always looked a bit iffy against those types of systems if I'm honest right let's do some changes though I want to make sure that our bench is still set up um, Koulibaly we're going to get him off of Bongongui um, who else can we get in here um, Halloween for Sanaya because he's got poor um, morale and I'd rather have Ntangu come on if we need him and is there anyone else that we really need left back defensive midfielder midfielder striker um we don't really need two defensive midfielders on the bench, do we, actually? Um, I'd be tempted to actually, in that case, get him on, on instead. Yeah, we'll get uh, Wazini on instead. Right, this hopefully... I don't know. I think away from home, despite playing a counter-attacking style, it doesn't seem to play into our hands, although apparently we're the favourites for this mission. We're all good on here. Yep. It's surprising, I must say. Um, yeah, I'd rather have him available, but what can you do? Uh, again, don't know who that is. They're actually very similar systems. They've got a little bit more width. Uh... They've basically just arranged it slightly differently. They've, this could be an interesting test for this system, actually. If anything, I'm going to be very curious to see what happens in this game. More than anything else, I'm very interested to see where this one goes. Um, let's just see how we do here. This is a bit of a test for us, because it's, it's a very narrow system. Oh, hello, Socrates could almost... Oh, no, he's not got the pace, unfortunately, the 35-year-old. But this is going to be a very narrow game, and I do wonder who's going to be able to get the best. An excellent start for us. We've got an injury after seven minutes. Well, what Livecom would be complete with that one? Uh, Wazin is going to have to come straight in here as the uh, shadow striker. That is not the ideal start for us. But Tim, I would take a draw away from home here. I, I would take a draw. If we could get a draw, I'd be happy with it, to be honest, because it would keep us the same distance above them. And that's kind of what I'm really interested in. Uh, they've started okay, but they've not had a shot on target yet. This is almost certainly going to be that. No? Well, I guess it kind of... No, apparently that doesn't count as a shot. Um, Possession-wise, we're ahead slightly, but it's really too... Not really that uh, important at this stage. Ikebane. I've got him being tutored by uh, Luther just because I feel that like they play a very similar style of position and it seems like the right thing to do since make the most of Luther while we've still got him at the club because Ikebane looks like one for the future. Out wide to Dia Diakabe. Ball across and... Oh, Wazin! 1-0 to Paris FC and that's the result we needed. If we can win here, then I have to say... The chances of us not going up are pretty slim if we can win in this match here. Uh, I really wouldn't expect us to. That is some fantastic running from Wazin. Pretty much playing the central striker role down to a tee. Uh, fantastic work from him. Great ball in from Diakabi as well. Right across the face of goal. And there he is, Wazin at the far post. I think that might be his first goal of the season. Even if we don't... Uh, right, Yusuf Toure. They're playing quite a high line. 
So I'm just wondering how that could work for a soccer. Area. Oh, I should have done better there, really. Um, it is a very, very congested area. They're going to have to make... It's going to be a battle of the fullbacks today. Ball in. There we go. Cleared away. It is just going to be a, yeah, a battle of who can get their fullbacks for the most. And I just wonder if maybe we set ourselves to exploit the flanks a little bit more. Um, I know this might sound strange, but I'm just wondering if we can play a little bit wider today, it might make a little bit more of a difference for us. I mean, they're probably doing the similar kind of thing because it is a very narrow type of system. But if we're, if we're going to stick with this actual shape, then we... Oh, come on! Oh, wow. That was nearly a very, very dangerous piece of play there. Hopefully now... Um, right, they've had an injury as well. They've had a few shots, but they've not really threatened the, the actual goalkeeper. They've not had one on target yet, and we do lead at half-time, and I think that was a decent first half from us. You know, we've not been on top, particularly, but we've got the lead, and we're hitting the target with our shots, and they're not, which I guess indicates to me that they're playing... It looks like they're shooting from long... Oh, hello. They've gone 4-4-2 now. Right. Take that off there. Let's uh, bomb them through the middle there. They've gone two up top to try and chase the game. That should, in theory, play into our hands, if anything. Um, I will keep an eye on their system, though. You know, we were actually quite good against 4 4 Ikebane, ball in, and it's Leobli. Oh, he's got a man on the edge. Can he pick him out? Not really. Oh, actually, he might. And Via. Uh-oh. Don't get counted on by them. That would be poor. But it does happen from time to time, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at the amount of players we've got in that area of the pitch. And that should just trickle through to the... Uh, well, not the goalkeeper, but the fullback. Demarcone now. Just... There we go. Passes into Traore. Out to Diakabi. I don't know whether our actual change has been made yet. There we go. Dropping it down to the midfield. Now, suddenly, they've not got that extra player in the midfield. And that could come... That could play right into us, I think. I actually think we might have a chance now. Oh, of course. But then, obviously, we're going to get some stuff like that, aren't we? Oh, what a chance that was. Great hit, have to say. Great strike. A uh, little bit unlucky there, but bad defending in the, the initial lead-up to that with those silly ones that just go straight over the defenders' heads, as usual. Um, but we still lead here, and that's cru That's just... Oh, come on, get out to him. Don't let them... Oh, once again, a fantastic block. Cedo, he's got to score. He has to score. Well cleared. Um, backs against the wall stuff yet, yeah. I have to say, but we've not let them have a shot on target yet. They've had 11 shots, not... Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, dear. Right, that's the second forced substitution of the day. I'm going to leave the other sub because we know we're going to get a third sub. It's almost inevitable in these games. You're going to have to make that third sub through injury. Um, they've. Are we going to seriously let them have, like, 12 shots and not a single one on target? Jabali, have a pop. No. Nope. Gamiet, have a pop. No. Nope. Somebody have a pop. <laughs> Ikebane rolls it through. Wazin and he's in again. It's 2-0. Incredible stuff. Well, okay. I would say inspired substitution, but it's not because it was forced on me. But well done him. Um, he's done a brilliant job there. We've... I would say smash and grab, but they've yet to... Oh, they have hit the target now. Lovely ball through from Ikebane. And Wazin making that run from beyond. And it is now 2-0 to Paris FC. We're in a fantastic run of form at the moment. And that should about wrap it up. If we can just hang on for the final five minutes. Bwalion. Ball in. Liebohi. Oh, he should have done better with that. That was a glorious opportunity to make it 3-0, and it would have been a bit harsh on them, I would have said. Um, are Amiens not winning? Can we just take a note of that? We were about to go five points clear at the top at this rate. Um, out of nowhere, really. And 13 points clear of dropping out of the promotions. There we go. SR, Colmar, nil. Paris FC, 2. I think we played our tactics pretty damn well in that game. I think switching back to um, exploiting the centre once they went 4-4-2 made a huge difference for us. And Yassine Wazin with a double today and yeah Amiens drew one all against relegation threat and Colomers they really are seem to be going off the boil at the moment which means we are five points clear of Amiens we are nine points clear of UBSCO and of course there you go Thir no not 13 points no it's, it's 13 points isn't it yeah it's 13 points clear now of dropping out of the promotion race and uh 13 points clear with nine games to go it makes me think that we've got a really good chance at getting up this year and that's going to be so so important for us let's just quickly check the injuries make sure they're not too bad oh dear thankfully he doesn't play for us that often but i would have rather not had that happen that was his debut as well he was injured after seven minutes that's a shame um post match pro oh they've sat their manager oh no that was the other game what we're talking about right let's take a look at i had a little look beforehand and saw what what games we could probably do i feel like the best one to do would be this one uh the ubsco one because it's a bit too far to the Amiens game, and then we'd have two loose games after that. I'd rather condense it to two so we could do the final day of the season as well. Um, besides, they're 
they're probably on a good bit of form. They might even be able to catch up with Amiens if they carry on at this rate. So we're going to do the UBSEO home game in the next episode. So if you guys like what you're seeing, and I hope you have, please do drop a like on the... We've just not... We've just realised. I've just realised. We've not conceded a goal in four league games. We've won all four of them. That's more like it. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, guys, uh, if you like what you're seeing, please do drop a like on the video. And if you've liked it even more than that, please subscribe to my channel for more Outcaster icons. And of course, from the shadows in your inbox every single day at 5.30 and 8 o'clock. And I will see you guys in the next episode for a game which in theory could wrap up our promotion to the French second division. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.